Okay, so I'm here talking to um, the filmmakers and cast, uh, sorry, cast behind Chocolate, which is a, uh, a nominated film at our festival in London. Congratulations and welcome Thank to Tiago. So. Is it Tiago? Tiago. Tiago. <laughs> Amy. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And if you'd like to explain who you are and your connection to the film. Okay. And who's doing the synopsis? Uh, the synopsis, well, I'm the director of Chocolate. Brilliant. And writer. <laughs> okay. So the synopsis is about a housewife, an American housewife, which become homeless in downtown LA. Yeah. So for you to know why she become homeless, yeah. you need to watch the film. Watch the film. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell much. But that's a little bit what the film is about. We'll have so much layers and stories inside that talk about this universe of why people are on, on street and the reasons why they are there. And that's a little bit what Chocolate talk about. And I shouldn't interrupt you because I know we're going to get on to Amy and Piercy, but this is a pilot or could be a series, am I right? Definitely could be actually a f a feature. Yeah. I would love that the film could make in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, it has so many histories and even the history of this woman, it's so much layers to tell in a short film. So that that's supposed to be a 15 minutes and it's almost 30 minutes yeah. short film. It's long. Yeah. So I truly, I hope it will become a feature film because it has a lot of good stories to tell there, yeah. you know? Yeah, I've, I have seen, but I really enjoyed the film. Oh, so, okay. good to know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Amy? Um, you don't I have to do the synopsis. <laughs> <you know? laughs> I might add a little to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I play Janet, a homeless mother, uh, in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and it, what drew me to the film, I mean, I'm just going to go into that. Um, when I read the breakdown, it what really spoke to me was this idea of a telling the stories um, of people who are the unseen. Mm. The unseen, the unheard. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when we're walking down the street, um, most people don't look at the people who are sitting on the ground. Um, we, as a society, tend to pretend that they're not there when they are. Yeah, that's um, true. And so this is really a story of this one particular woman who becomes homeless and like what that background is, how she becomes homeless. And I think it's so important to tell those stories um, because not every single person who's homeless is a drug addict or has mental issues or whatever. It, it, it's a variant of things that happen in people's lives that put them in that situation, but we automatically, I think, sometimes go to, oh, they're all on drugs, or oh, they're all oh. alcoholics, which is so far from the truth. Oh yeah, um, well, something was wrong with them, whatever. Like yeah, or they did not, bad things. In yeah, their life bad that things. Got them yeah, to that place. Uh, yeah, because they that, deserve it. Yeah, <laughs> right. And actually, yeah, picking up that point because it's quite apparent, having seen it, that the fall from the fall from grace is the wrong, the wrong thing to say. But the um, the way that this particular woman, she sort of seems to have everything, and you know. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's quite a twist on what most people would imagine. Like you say, you think, oh well, yes. drug addict or alcohol, but it's not that at all really, no. is it? No, it's, it's, it's not. So it sort of leads me on to Pierce, so I should, yeah, so sorry, can you just yeah, say? Yeah, no, of course, but I do want to, I do think it's also still important <clears throat> to recognize that, um, you know, there's a there's a whole other layer there also that, let's say oh, people yeah. are drug users, are mm. using drugs, like that's not necessarily, <laughs> um, that's not necessarily something for punishment, right? Know? so there's yeah. also the story, which would be, Really helpful if we had a feature. We it would be it would be it would dive in more to the culture of um, the street culture that yeah. really took my character Eve in mm. when she was in trouble. So I so I play Eve. <laughs> 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 Shit, I was just wondering. Who are you? She's the housewife to become yeah. homeless. I'm a yeah. suburban, <laughs> suburban housewife with a child, and I end up homeless by. Well, throughout the movie, and it's You're circumstances. Still not telling you why. Yeah. <laughs> How? I'm trying to be really careful. <laughs> it's circumstances beyond <laughs> my ability to prevent, I guess. Um, but that's even that's even another tricky thing is that it mm -hmm. it is a little. It would be nice if everyone saw it so that <laughs> we could speak about it because that also is another. Um, 
it's, it's another element of the movie that I think is really important for public to recognize as a real occurrence in our, mm -hmm. in our society and how people come into um, events in their life or whatever that will cause their life to change so drastically and so quickly and without any help. I, I, I'm not, I really haven't got a clue when it comes to what we would call the safety net in the, in the US as opposed to the UK. So for instance, I don't know, didn't know, don't know, that if, say, you were had been fully in, in full employment for, shall we say, 10 years, paid all your taxes, and suddenly were made redundant, lost your job, what that safety net would be. So in other words, I don't know if there'd be any kind of social backup. I, Welfare, we'd call it the dole or whatever you call it. I, I mean, know. yeah, there's, there's things in place, but a lot of times it's very difficult sometimes, and it can be very overwhelming to even mm -hmm. get social aid. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times I think, like I've had friends in particular, I'm also, as an artist, I've been in a situation where it's like I had to decide between I'm paying my rent or I'm paying my car note. Which am I choosing? Yeah. I'm going to pay my rent so that yeah. I can keep yeah. a, a roof over my so head can, yeah, so I lost fun. my car. Um, or, you know, a friend of mine, she got in a That's car true. accident and um, had she not had a safety net of friends who were able to take her in she essentially was homeless, oh my God, um, right. but uh, because yeah. you know myself and other friends had the means, but sometimes people just don't—they don't have the network of people yeah. that are there to help them, or they're afraid to ask for help, um, or the system is—I mean, yeah, there's not. There are institutions and in, in, in social, governmental ways of helping people, but. A lot of times I feel like it's so difficult to get and it can be so intricate and you have to wait and then... I, I, I had a chance during the process of studying and search to make this film. I was a um, volunteer in downtown LA yeah. for two and a half months. So I was oh, there... So you were intrinsically linked to what's actually going yes, on? Yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. So I saw a little bit how they try to get people away from the streets and it's something completely capable they can do that but it's just Having the will they the don't money. want yeah. to yeah. so that's Some the don't. sad yeah I, I mean the government I think they have the money to do it but well the great news is really the great news is you've got a brand new caring president in place yeah so right? what is going to be the problem <laughs> I mean things are really going to turn there. around yeah. every day it's turning news and I just think I keep thinking what comedic thing has happened overnight. Exactly. Has that really happened? Oh, anyway, it, it is insane. Yeah. <laughs> but, that but, is, but that is like, that is the reality of the US right now. And that's like, that's, I think that's like, that is connected to what our film is about because Definitely. Um, things happen without us taking a stand early on, you know, mm. let's say, for example, our current president had early on platform to speak in a certain manner in public that we let slide, you know, from the beginning maybe and like stuff like that. And same, similar to Eve in this movie, there's um, an ex certain acceptance of her situation by the general society that allows her to sleep kind of further into trouble. Yeah, you kind of sleepwalk into it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But we're, look, we're no less guilty in the UK. I mean, we, we all let these things happen because we've got a nice middle class lives or you know we all live presumably quite comfortably in a nice house and whatever you, your trappings are so it's very easy to see these things and it's the same with us that there's um, I, I mean I'm trying to stay political but I, I am I don't mind saying I'm left leaning but there's things that I've seen that are happening and it's only I to think about and I think does that really happen you know is that why hasn't no one done anything about it yeah because you <laughs> because humans by nature are lazy, frankly, yes, aren't they? Yeah. Definitely. And if it's not specifically affecting you right then exactly. and there, oh, yes, exactly. in That's that true. immediate, then it's easy for us to dismiss things that yes. are happening. Mm. Yes. Um, so the fact that someone like that is now leading the country, uh, it, it, it's a mirror, I think, to how in general we can tend to live our lives and situations get out of hand. Yeah. Yeah, but the reason that I would like to like why I want to make this film for me was I grew up in Brazil. Yeah. Because uh, the last film I knew, I should, should just say, it was a comedy, wasn't it? The no, last one that I knew comedy. about, because I knew from uh, you from a previous film, didn't I? And that was, it wasn't our comedy film, it was a comedy short. 
what you've done. Life on a yeah, 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 Life on a Leash. Life yeah. on a Leash. So this yes. is radically different. No, no, no. Yeah, course, because you know. because yeah. I, I actually like more to, to talk things which is uncomfortable for me. Mm -hmm. And I, it's not that people on the street is uncomfortable to me. It's uncomfortable that why we live day there. Yeah. You know, that that is uncomfortable for me. So I grew up in, in a place like Sao Paulo. It's a huge city. Yeah, yeah. And have thousands of people on the street but we grow up like as a 30 war country so you think is as a poor country it's okay people on the street so then when i moved to usa and i start to see like homeless in everywhere i was like something it's it's not only brazil it's in everywhere and then i start to travel all over USA and is in everywhere oh yeah, yeah. and it's even here yeah. so it's it's a it's a worldwide thing oh, yeah, yeah. and that was something like that i feel really uncomfortable because i believe we 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 lost as a human being when we have people in that situation yeah okay. so then i was like I, I need to talk about this and the way that i got in, in in eve's story i was trying different ways like oh she lost her house she you know not handle the situation, or husband, whatever. But then I start to search and search and search, and I got this information about this what she has, <laughs> and and Wait, that 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 that, that freaked me because I could never imagine somebody in that age could have that type of thing and. What happened to her? You what know? happened yeah. to? Yeah, yeah. And and also, if you think about it, like the time that I was in downtown LA, uh, searching and talking with people, with homeless people, they all uh, during the process, we all went there and walk around and see the situation. Like somebody, we doesn't matter the disease they have, if they are in, in that place, walking with you know dirty clothes, they they mix, and you don't like. They are all kind of the same type of people. That's what society see them. Yeah. So it's really hard to think that that woman, it's a housewife. She has a family. She has a daughter. She has a life. But we not see this. We just see the dirty people, drug addict, yeah, whatever. So there was, when I got um, the problem, why this woman is on the street was my like go to do this movie mm. and, and now this information this information when people watch it and see like I have no idea that could happen and and there was something new for me and it's amazing that the information is passing by for people too and can I ask I know you, you're originally from Sao Paulo yes so when you said <coughs> and this is not me making any kind of criticism just saying you said it's kind of accepted there because that's the way it is yes but now having seen what you've seen in the US when you go back to Paulo, did you actually think, well, that shouldn't be the way it is? And well, no, you know, I totally, uh, I never feel... Did you know what I'm trying to say? What I'm trying to say, sorry about this, it must have completely changed your outlook. That's no, what I'm guessing. No, completely. Uh, uh, like I said, like, I feel so comfortable yeah, that yeah. nobody's doing anything. And I think that's the way to make this film was a way for me to do something. Yeah. And maybe if one person get out and after watch the film and feel like start to look that that people on the street in a different way, that's that's what I would like to to do with this movie. Actually, and, and am I right that I think I read I might, I might have got this completely wrong that I was Amy or Pierce or one of you both you actually spent some time. Well, we, we both actually went, yeah, we, yeah, we both went, Tiago, separately, we both went with Tiago to um, Skid, Skid Row, Row yeah. and walked around, and I've been there before, um, I've worked with different organizations that's gone, and um, uh, either... Emily, during the Christmas, she, she, she does a yeah. campaign, she helps, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I've got I go and help feed the feed the homeless, or I take donations. So I, I've gone before, um, but to actually just go and walk, just walk, not passing out anything, just going and walking and observing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a different experience uh, rather than just kind of driving around and stopping and passing stuff out yeah, and yeah, saying hi yeah. and then moving on to the next. But like really immersing yourself in. Um, 
spending you know that hour or two that we did and walking and really looking at the people and the situations that some of them are in um, and even in my neighborhood like I don't live near Skid Row but I mean almost there it's yeah, everywhere. I know it is. Everywhere. It is. Everywhere. And I can set you. I mean, I when I last in the US, only a couple of years ago, and I went, I flew into Chicago, and then we drove. Nothing to do. It's a different job. That's about three years ago. I flew in Chicago, and then we drove from Chicago up to um, Indianapolis. Um, and with Chicago, I hadn't been there before. Actually, it was the second time I'd been there. Yes, it was the second time I'd been there. And I was really shocked about the homelessness mm-hmm. I saw. And it's even rain it's, so much. Yeah, and also the other thing that really shocked me, it probably even more, is when we drove to Indianapolis, I always get it confused with Minneapolis, I don't know why, we stopped at a place called Gary, Indiana. I mean, when you see windows with signs of no soliciting, and wow. you see like the deprivation around there, and it was quite an eye opener. I see. Um, and you kind of don't expect that from a, from the US but that's true like I said we, we've got it in London of course yeah and you know I'm as but it's so much less I, I mean still but it is I, I, I was just shocked like like I said when you grow up in Brazil yeah in a country that you grow up saying that is a poor country yeah, you're not gonna stretch you the US, okay you're kind of okay but when you go to US that is you know the biggest economy and everything and you see there and also, like like you say, I came, I, I went back, yeah, yeah, and start to see in a different way for sure, and it's growing so much in in US around the world. I think all these homeless the people. The what do you think? Yeah, yeah the is. gap is is growing, and I think we're losing the way to to push this back. Well, I feel That's like how we, I feel. in a way, we get we the more modern we get, the more and the more technology and the more advanced. I I feel like we tend not as individuals, but as societies, we tend to lose our connection with each other mm. and the idea of, of society and being a community of people rather than this is what I'm doing and it doesn't really affect you or me. Like what you're doing doesn't affect me. And if I'm making more than you, I don't need to. Like I feel like we just sort of the gap of getting away from that idea of just humanity, of helping each other and taking care of each other. Well, stu- um, it's, yeah, and it's stunning to think that California is saying it's what the sixth largest economy in the world, or most successful economy. And Los so, Angeles has the most homeless people in the it, United it, it's States. It's unbelievable. So yeah. you've got a state that stands out as a sixth most powerful economy within the US. Yes. And yet, you, what was that stat? It's got the most homeless people. That's incredible, isn't it? So, you know, there's me saying I'm not going to answer any tricky questions, but what's the answer? For sure. What's the answer? Yeah, I don't know. Well, and that's not meant to what, trap you. In your opinion, what, what, what needs to be done? What needs to be done? I think, I think it's the same thing that they try to do in prisons, which is uh, you try to have somebody in the prison and try then to do things and work and then you know, get out of there and have a job and have a new life. I think it's kind of the same thing. You need to train these people, mm. put them, each one is a different situation. One have a disease, one have drugs, we have, so you need to train them, give them an, a job, a way to start everything again. And that's, that's how I feel that sh- should be done. Okay, you know I'm gonna ask you the same question, don't you? <laughs> I mean. Um. Such a, I think it's such an intricate question. It is because I suppose there's no one answer. That's the no. It, it, it's a situation that there is no one answer. Um, and I know that there are programs in in place, but really, uh, I think a lot of it has to do with well, studying like how did that situation happen? Like how did it get that Los Angeles has so many homeless people? What's going on within the city? and the state that's causing this to happen. So like, it's imposs- It's almost impossible to find a place to live that's affordable for many people. Yeah. Um, and we have so many companies coming in and building new places and the rent is like $3,000 and and for yeah. a one bedroom apartment. Oh. What family, who's, most of the families can't afford that. So it's, we, you have to go back to what's, what's caused it, but also, working with people on an individual basis. There are, there are a lot of people, it's sort of like the, the prison mentality that you've been in that situation for so long that when you are put in a situation like, okay, here's a place to live, and here's a, a job, job. Yeah. and um, here's stuff, go. Yeah. They don't know what to do with it because they've been in this sort of prison of homelessness, of, you know, and there's, there's a, a freedom 
you know, to not yeah. having to pay rent and not having to pay bills and not having, you Responsibilities, know, like having yeah. a responsibility. I would, I, who wouldn't that sometimes that want would be to, wonderful. you know? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but um, it's, how do we re, uh, what's the word? Um, integrate people yeah. into what we consider to be this normal societal life. It's case um, by case. And, and really, like figuring out what is their specific problem, whether it's mental illness or it's addiction or... Um, it's complicated. Yeah, I mean, every situation is different. It's, it's very complicated, but it's like figuring out, I think, as societies and communities and individuals, how you can help make it better. Yeah. Whether Pierce it's volunteering... Singer thinking, shit, in, they've stolen all my answers. Yeah, actually, not at all. Sorry, I'm I have to. a pretty different perspective. I think... I would like us to start accepting all ways of life rather than yeah. to have people conform to something that we've already created through a capitalist society. I don't think it functions on a level that will allow all people to thrive. It functions mm. on a certain percentage to thrive and others to struggle. And I think that as soon as we can accept homelessness as a way of life and an equal to anyone else of us out there, um, then we'll at least be sharing a system rather than separating it and I don't know I mean I just don't I would like to really stop even myself from talking about an entire culture as something apart from me or something that I want to help even I find that I can get into a position of um, elitism just by thinking that I can bring them up or into my life or them even you know saying them grouping it into a verbal vocabulary like that is, I think, dangerous. Like, if we could instead um, actually treat each other as equals. Is there people that, that that's how they, they, they want? Well, I don't even want to say want and stuff because there's an entire system yeah. working yeah. against them, but, like, I definitely think that just integrating everyone's life into one <laughs> system that works together. I mean, I'm not sure it's easier in hindsight, because life is, isn't it? But I, I mean, I think with lots of problems like this that are going on, and it's, it's really easy to say this, but had we looked, done things differently just 50 years ago, just small things, we wouldn't be in a situation right now with, for example, healthcare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because to be frank, I don't have a clue about how Obamacare works or whatever you call it, and you know, all the, the, the intricacies and whether it's right or wrong, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm ignorant of that. But I kind of think, I haven't spoken to a couple of Americans, because I, I suggested to say, well, if you'd have done this 50 years ago and had a kind of, as we did after the Second World War, we brought a National Health Service, even though ours is creaking a bit, but it's, it works, would things be different? Because you'd have started it very early on, and they said, yeah, it would have been. But of course, it's so easy to think back and do say, well, if only we'd done this, that, and the other. I think the problem is with a population of 320 million, mm -hmm. and these, this deprivation all over the US, and like I say, in the UK, we have massive problems. It's so different because you've got a population spread across a huge mm -hmm. country, um, and the problems are so ingrained, I guess, it's such a difficult nut to crack. It is. But I, having said that, I love what you were saying, it's really valid. You know, and I just. Thank you. I'm guessing, having played the roles, it must have changed perhaps how you look at things. I don't know. Did it? Did it, it change how you look at things? For me, for sure, not necessarily just in retrospect, like in respect to what we're discussing now, but in the other parts of the movie that are really <laughs> revealed. It, like, it was heartbreaking. We actually uh, came across a situation that replicated the situation of the character that we play. Well, in reality, in actually. reality, yeah, yeah, yes. It's just yeah. still missing. Like months after, um, after completion, we came across this true story that's more true to our story than we could have ever imagined. And I did what I felt was in my power to help, and it was utterly heartbreaking mm -hmm. and lonely, and no one wanted to participate that I could, that I had the ability to reach out to, you know? So it's opened, it's really made it pretty clear to me how uh, individual, I guess, mm -hmm. we behave on a regular basis. Yeah, That's even what it brought up when we were talking about social media and when we posted about the film and this specific part of the film and it 
resonated. Resonated. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. Da, da, da. And then when it we it switched to oh, this is life. something that really happened. It's not the film, but it's yeah. it, like two people liked it. Too Nobody much. really paid yeah. attention to it, and it's like. Yeah, it's not just kind of one post. No, no it was like, like several. Loads loads, but then yeah, it also yeah. brings in the idea of like what our job is. It's not just to entertain, but it also is to tell these stories yeah. that are really happening um, and go through emotions that are really happening with people um, yeah. that sometimes you aren't aware of um, and bringing it to life. But what I think is very important in this film too, that this woman was very welcome from the homeless people, is the homeless people you should care. Well, P Pierce's character we're talking about here. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. I didn't like her. Uh, <coughs> it, 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 take care of her the time that she's on the street. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's another thing that people think, you know, about bad things about them. And in the end, is they, they are who care, caring about this woman and taking care of her in their ways, but, but it is, it's still. So, yeah, I, ho I just hope people start to look in, in, in her problem in a different way and also in the homeless issue too. Okay, thank you. That's Thank brilliant. you. Thank you.